Well, thanks for joining us again. I'm meteorologist Dan Brunoff here in uh, Dallas Fort Worth area with Dr. Monty Trimble at Dallas Breathe 3. Again, appreciate you joining me. We've got some valuable information so far. We'll have a lot more little tidbits of things we'll be uh, sharing with you here on social media. So I was a mess and I've been a mess for 20 years and I'm not talking about my job or my hair, <laughs> but I'm talking about this guy right here, my nose. Um, I was miserable, snoring at night, um, couldn't breathe, got sinus infections all the time. I'm the poster child for the worst case scenario, right? And you were honest with me and said, Dan, um, we're gonna fix you, but you're, you're, you're a mess. <laughs> so, and you did. But a lot of people out there may get little bouts of nasal congestion or get diagnosed with a sinus infection, you know, maybe once a year, things like that. But they don't realize that they would probably come in, should come in and see you to get help. Not that they're visible all the time, right? But they're just sporadic, you know, maybe once a year, twice a year. How, why should they come in and see you when, when it's not that bad? Well, one thing I, I have to remind myself uh, when I when I uh, moved here a little over 20 years ago, I really never had a sinus infection. I get colds every year, but then when I moved here, then six months I started getting you know the typical you know nasal congestion. I get some discolored drainage. You know, a lot of times it wouldn't get better without an antibiotic, and, and it kind of reminded me that you know getting a sinus infection is really not normal, even though medically speaking, you know, we, we have kind of this standard where if we're gonna intervene, if we're gonna do surgery or an office space procedure, we're typically looking for someone who is getting, you know, more than three sinus infections a year, you know, despite some type of, you know, therapy like Flonase or something like that. But one thing I'm often reminded of when patients come in and maybe they're getting one sinus infection a year is, is I begin to talk with them, I find out that they actually have chronic sinusitis as well. A lot of times patients are like, oh, I only get one sinus infection a year. I'm better after maybe two or three weeks. Uh, and then I'll ask them, well, I mean, do you snore at night? And a lot of times they're like, oh, well, I've snored for the last five or six years. And I'm like, well, that's not normal. And so, you know, we evaluate them and find out indeed, not only do they have maybe the occasional acute sinus infection, but they also have chronic sinusitis as, as What's well. What's the difference between acute and chronic? Well, I mean, acute is something where your symptoms are confined to a period of four weeks or less. Okay. Once you have 12 weeks or more of symptoms, in spite of treatment, then you venture into chronic rhinosinusitis. So that's really the difference between the two. Uh, some people, I think, think that you have to have acute sinusitis in order to get chronic sinusitis, but that is certainly not the case. Uh, many people who have chronic rhinosinusitis don't know it. Hmm. Uh, just because they're so used to being this way. Is it dangerous? You know, I mean, well, can it be? Yeah, I mean, I mean, acute sinusitis, you know, occasionally can be dangerous, you right. know, if, if the bad stuff in your nose gets into places it shouldn't be, like the eye or the brain. Obviously, where chronic rhinal sinusitis becomes maybe, you know, dangerous, if that's really a good term, is for patients that have fairly significant disease and that disease just continues to build up in the sinuses. I mean, that disease, you know, over time can press into the orbits of the eye as well as into the brain. Uh, you know, obviously I have, you know, tons of stories about cases, you know, that we could talk forever where it's really distorted the normal sinus uh, anatomy. Now, uh, you know, hopefully people, you know, obviously intervene before it actually sure. becomes something more serious, but it is. And I think that's the thing, like for me, this is very routine and, and you know, patients do very well, but we always have to remember that there's those exceptions that, you know, do have, you know, serious issues when it comes to this problem. Yeah. Good information. Yeah, very good.